one day, as we continue to show the love of God, people will come to you and say, your love was your love. It was your love. Your love encourages me. Your love refreshes me. Your love has kept me strong. Your love has attracted me to want to know the God that put that love in your heart. Your love. I pray 2024, we can take a big step forward and we show the love of God. Good morning, Every Nation Church, Malaysia. Hi, my name is Terence, and I want to welcome all of you, those of you who are here on site, and also those of you who are watching online to our Sunday service. You know, church, as we prepare ourselves for service today, many of you would agree with me that, you know, this week has been a surreal week, you know, coming to terms with the passing of a great man, a great man of God. And I get it, church. I totally understand uh, where you guys are coming from. You know, there are some things that only God can answer, you know, and somewhere along in His great plan, we are where we are today. And I always think that, you know, one day when I meet God, I will have so many questions to ask Him. You know, church, there's, I always say this, you know, there is a time, you know, I want to encourage you, there's a time to, to grieve, there's a time to celebrate, you know, and I know it's easier said than done, but think about it. What would Pastor Tim want us to do? You know, as I stand here looking at every one of you here in this place, in this church, and those of you who are watching online, I'm sure that, you know, in some ways, Pastor Tim has, has touched your life. And that is the reason why, you know, I always see that, uh, you know, he leaves the 99 to pursue that one, to save that one, and that one is you. you know, tell the person on your right and your left, uh, you are that one. You are that one. And so I guess it's time to return that favour. You know, church, as I listened to Pastor Tim's last message, preached at Generations Church, the main thing, right? You know, one thing he said really captured me. He said that, um, quote, uh, last words are important. And I know a lot of men and women of God who will honour the last words of a particular person. That's what he said in his message. And Pastor Tim's last message, you know, it, or the word is to keep the main thing, the main thing. And what is that main thing? That main thing is to honour God 
and make disciples. So now it's our turn to carry on His legacy. It's our turn to honour God and make disciples. And that's why we have to stand strong, you know, stand strong not only for Him, but also for God. And I want to encourage you with a word from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. It says here that, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. You know, I remember on Saturday night, church, you know, flood, uh, f- messages were flooding into my phone and through those messages, I see uh, prayers and also uh, prayers asking for a miracle. You know, as I was attending the wake service and the funeral service, right, you know, I, I realised that, you know, that miracle, right, is the miracle that Pastor Tim lived. His life was the miracle. The thousands who attended the service online, uh, offline, you know, uh, those who came to, to, to pay their last respects to Him. That was the miracle. You know, and and I, I was really amazed with the life that He lived. So I know this sounds like a eulogy, but church, it is not a eulogy. Instead, this is a call, okay? It's a call for us to stir up one another like what Hebrews mentioned, yeah? To wipe away the tears and to celebrate the life of an amazing man of God. You know, let us all put on our armour as we go into battle for God to make disciples and to honour Him. So church, let's stand to our feet, you know, as we honour God. Let us worship Him with all our hearts. Over to you, worship team. Morning church. Let's look to Jesus today.
me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand here in the power of Christ we stand come on church let's praise him in the place
God another clap offering. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Every Nation Church Malaysia. You may be seated. Uh, my name is Terence. For those of you who know me, and for those of you who don't know me, it is also Terence. I want to welcome all of you all back to the house of the Lord. And today we have a full house. You know, um, it's already packed in here in, uh, in the auditorium. So there are chairs that are being set up uh, in the foyer, which is just outside of this hall. So uh, if you want to be seated, you can actually go and sit uh, at, uh, on the chairs at the foyer. All right. Okay. Um, again, welcome to all of you who are here. Uh, and for those of you who are watching online as well. And uh, if you are here for the first time, you know, we want to encourage you to scan the QR code, all right? If you're here for the first time or if you're watching online for the first time, take out your phone, scan the QR code, fill in your details because we love to connect with you and get to know you better. And for those of you who are on site in this place, you know, there is a connect corner just outside at the foyer. If you come into the church, it's on your left. And if you go out from this hall, it's on your right. You know, we want to invite you to come and join us at this connect corner so that we can get to know you better as well. Okay, uh, next will be uh, offering. You know, this is, uh, I always say, the best part about uh, the service, right? There's three ways of giving. You can scan the QR code, you can uh, pay through check or bank transfer. Okay, if you use the QR code, uh, do not use your e-wallet uh, scanner, but use your phone scanner or your QR scanner, okay? And then you can uh, um, click and select how you want to give, whether you want to give an offering or your tithes. You know, and uh, while you're doing that, I want to share a little story or a short sharing about uh, giving. You know, survey has shown that uh, it is better to give than to receive. You know why? You know, it's just like a balloon. You know, how many of you have actually blown a balloon before? Yeah, you have, right? And you know, it comes to a point you will actually stop blowing, right? Correct? If you, if you don't stop blowing, what happens? The balloon explodes, it bursts. So likewise, you know, if we just receive and receive and receive and receive, right? One, one day it comes to a point where we can't take it anymore, we will explode. So it's always good to, to give. Okay, it's good to give. And uh, survey and research have actually shown that it is also uh, good to give, better to give than to receive, you know. Um, survey shows that, right, when we give, right, we're actually more happy, we feel more accomplished. Have you actually heard people who go around bragging and say, you know how much I get today? Uh? You know how much I make today? Very, very few, right? But you hear a lot of people who go around and say, hey, you know what? Today I have done this and I have shown this and I have did this for someone and all. And we feel happy, we feel accomplished. All right, church? So today when you give, you know, I want to encourage you, give from your heart, right? Give from your heart because God knows and God loves whatever that you're giving. Okay, let's pray for the giving. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. And as your people give, from the bottom of their hearts, Lord, we pray that you bless your cheerful givers, Lord Jesus. And whatever that's given to God, we know, God, that it will be used for the extension of your kingdom, O oh Lord. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask and we pray. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen. All right, for uh, the next part, which is the announcement, I'll pass the time to Pastor Sean. Thank you, you guys enjoy worship today? Yes. Thank you for leading us into a time of encounter with the Lord. Um, you know, church, we drafted this communication maybe about two days ago and we would like to read it to you and we read it to the different location in our Every Nation Church uh, this weekend. Dear Every Nation Malaysia family, we understand that this is a very difficult season for the church. As many, or if, if not all of you have known by now, our beloved Pastor Timothy Lowe passed away on April 6, 2024 due to a massive heart attack during a dinner fellowship after a speaking engagement. Three doctors were present, attended to him immediately. Intercessory prayers were also initiated both at the church that he was speaking and also in our Every Nation prayer chat groups. When he was discovered to have no power, CPR was immediately institution initiated and these efforts were performed for almost an hour including the time that he was taken to the hospital as well as in the hospital, but there was no return of heart function. Pastor Timothy passed on while doing what he loved most, preaching the Word of God and encouraging a local church. Pastor Timothy Law served officially as our senior pastor of Every Nation Church Malaysia since 2001, and under his guidance, 14 churches were established across various cities in Malaysia along with one in China. 
He was known for his ability to simplify God's word and infuse it with Malaysian humor. But more than that, Pastor Tim, his preaching, his guidance, his love touch the lives of so many people. In this season of grief and recovery, we are scaling back in some of our events. Victory Weekend scheduled for next weekend will be postponed to the second half of the year. We will also not have the Holy Spirit encounter as previously scheduled for this weekend. However, Water Baptism Obey, scheduled for the end of the month, will still proceed as planned. We want to encourage everyone to keep his family and to support one another in this grieving season. As we grieve with hope, we also celebrate the life, the legacy of Pastor Timothy. We also want to thank the church for their overwhelming support, love, prayers displayed throughout this entire week. Let us take heed of the last message that he preached, which is to keep the main thing, the main thing, and to honour God and to make disciples from the pastoral team of Every Nation Church Malaysia. We thank you so much for being together, for being united, and to watch out for one another in this season. You know, today it is such a privilege um, to be part of this Every Nation family, and we have seen different pastors, different leaders from the movement to come together as friends, as co-workers, as co-ministers of the gospel, just to be with the family and to be with the church. Today, Pastor Steve Merle is the founder and the president of Every Nation Global Family Network of Churches. And if there's one leader that Pastor Tim look up to and learn the most from, it is Pastor Steve Merle. Today, he's here not just as a president of the Every Nation, he's also here as a friend. Let's welcome Pastor Steve to hear the word. Thank you, Pastor Sean. You can hear me? Um, it is a tremendous honor to be here. Um, this has been a um, very tough week for all of you. Uh, I, I know that. It's been very hard for you guys. Um, I am... The last time I talked to Pastor Timothy was about two weeks ago. And um, as always, he was not only full of the word, but he was expressing how proud he is of his family. And he especially went on, Joel, about uh, what you're doing in Japan. Um, and he was always proud of all of you guys, and um, I know he is right now more than ever, and I, um, words can't express the, the sorrow. Uh, I'm very sorry for your pain and your grief, and it's been a, it's been a odd week because we are in mourning and sad and then celebrating at the same time, and um, I was privileged to be at the last night and heard Jaden, I was about to say Pastor Jaden, heard Jaden honoring his father. And uh, I wish I had been able to hear each one of you. I hope it's recorded because I, I was, um, the expression, and the, the mature expression of grief and celebration. And they're conflicting emotions for us. Uh, but like Everything else I can think of um, with this church, you do everything well, and you guys have done, from what I've seen, a great job of celebrating and grieving, and that'll go on. It, 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 it'll, it'll continue. So, um, Pastor Teresa, I'm so sorry, and I feel tremendous honor to be here, um, tremendous privilege, and so for, um, for all of you, you're in our prayers. People all over the world are praying. And um, 
I think it's several people have mentioned Pastor Timothy's last sermon. But I also want to take note of where he was preaching. Uh, Generations Church, I know little about it except that it's younger people than Pastor Timothy, certainly. And um, as all of you know, he was always a great believer in the next generation, especially these four. But not just you guys. Um, a great vision and passion for a church that would not just reach his generation, but a church that would really care about the generations coming behind us. And um, I so appreciated that about Pastor Timothy all these years. Um, he was a very valuable voice in my life to the point where I asked him years ago if he would serve on our Global Apostolic Summit and the Global Apostolic Council. It was eight leaders from around the world. And um, Timothy was a very trusted voice, not only by me, but on everyone on that Global Apostolic Council. Several of you, Gilbert, Jackie, served as well. And I uh, can think about when we were finalizing our most important theological doctrine, doc, uh, document, our statement of faith, uh, Timmy's, Timothy's voice was as important and actually more important than almost every voice that spoke into that. And uh, I, um, I will certainly miss his biblical depth and his deep theological understanding uh, as as I lead um, a ministry in more than 80 nations, Timothy's voice was very valuable, very valuable to us. Um, but he asked after a few years if he could get off of that team. And he said he would prefer, we have two governing teams. We have our apostolic council and we have our global team. Our global team is made up of 15 regional directors around the world. And he said, I would rather do that. And um, of course, if I had asked him to do both, Timothy always wanted more work. Um, but I didn't think it was fair to you guys <laughs> to have him do both. So I reluctantly uh, appointed him to the global team because he wanted to be more involved in this region and leading uh, the Southeast Asia region. Because in the global council, the apostolic council, you had to pay attention to the whole world, and he really was so deeply committed to this city and this nation and your people and your region that he served in a place that he didn't want to on the Apostolic Council and then began serving in the region and, again, was amazing to work with in that region. And so for me, I will tremendously miss his, his voice and his leadership and his friendship. Um, because it wasn't just, uh, Timothy wasn't just a brain, uh, he was a heart too. And, uh, and it was the intellect mixed with the heart for people and the humor that went with that. So, um, <clears throat> question for all of us at Every Nation, uh, Malaysia, and specifically this con congregation in Puchong, the question is, and also in Damansara, who I think they'll be tuning in later. People are, I think, are watching from different places. The question is, what now? What is this church supposed to look like in the future? And what is this, what is this church going to do? And how are we going to go about it? Those are um, important questions that all the answers will be obvious over weeks and months and years. The great news is, um, this church was never established on the foundation of Pastor Timothy Lowe. Some churches really are. They're built around a great preacher, and there was no preacher greater than yours. And when that great preacher is there, no longer there, I see big churches all over America that a great preacher has moved on and passed away, and now they're empty, they're empty halls or they're a, a skeleton of what they were. Uh, but this church was never founded on the teaching of Pastor Timothy Lowe. It was always founded on Jesus Christ and the eternal Word of God. Not the words of Timothy, but the Word of God. 
And so I'm confident, assured, and certain that um, this church will be more than okay. This church is going to continue to have an impact on every community it touches. And it'll continue to be a witness for Christ in a community that desperately needs a witness for Christ. Somebody mentioned it earlier, how Pastor Timothy, one of the greatest examples I know of leaving the 99 and going after the one. He, every time I talked to your pastor, it seemed like every time I would ask him usually and he would have another story of someone he had just led to the Lord. Um, and it was usually within a week old. It wasn't like three years ago. It was always anew and I would get so convicted and feel like I wasn't a very good Christian, a very good leader, a very good pastor uh, because I compared myself to him. <laughs> um, um, so this church is going to be okay. But like any important question, I want to go to Scripture to try to find an answer. What is the way forward for this church? What is next for this church? And I want to turn to Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. And if you have a Bible, I'd like you to look at that Scripture with me. And we're going to read... Um, um, Seemed like we had a slanted podium last time, but is this, is this, I, you know, it's okay. Can I use this one? That is the heaviest music stand I've ever picked up. <laughs> that right there is what a music stand should be. Wow. I want one of those. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry to rearrange the furniture in someone else's house. Okay. All right. Can you stand with me as we read the Word of God? I don't, I don't, I don't need that. We're reading Deuteronomy 31, verses 1 through 8. So Moses continued to speak. Oh wait. oh, wait, you're reading. Okay, wait, okay, let me catch up with you. <laughs> I didn't realize you were reading. All right, you can read. Okay, yeah. So Moses continued to speak these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I am no longer able to go out and come in. The Lord has said to me, you shall not go over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself will go over before you. He will destroy these nations before you so that you shall dispossess them. And Joshua will go over at your head as the Lord has spoken. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land when he destroyed them. And the Lord will give them over to you, and you shall do to them according to the whole commandment that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. This is the Word of God. May the Holy Spirit help us understand and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Moses, I was talking earlier with Pastor Sean to make sure people would understand the phrase I'm about to use, and then I decided not to use it, but here I go. Moses was the goat. <laughs> Anybody know what the goat means? Greatest of all times, right? Some people say Messi is the goat. I know that might rile some people up. In basketball, some people say Michael Jordan was the goat. 
Um, in tennis, it's controversial. Is it Djokovic, who most people don't like, or is it Federer, who everyone loves? Who was the GOAT, the greatest of all time? Moses was the greatest leader these people had ever known. One of the greatest leaders we read about in Scripture. These people had known no other leader besides the goat. Now, for those who listened to Pastor June preach last night, he preached about the sheep and the goats. So I'm not saying that uh, he said one was aligned to heaven, the other was aligned to hell. So I'm not saying that Moses was in the goat line. That's a different, I'm mixing up my metaphors, but Moses was the greatest leader they could ever imagine. Because of Moses' leadership, they were free. Because of Moses' leadership, they were no longer in slavery. Moses' leadership brought them out of bondage into freedom. Moses' leadership gave them hope for the first time in 400 years. They had a hope of a promised land just for them. Moses' leadership had miraculous deliverance, miraculous provision, miraculous healing. When the snakes bit them and people are dying and all of these miracles happen and all of the personal change and now for the first time, the families had hope, the, the generations had hope. I know some of you feel like that with Pastor Timothy. All of that has happened to you because of his ministry into your lives. Moses was the greatest leader. Moses was the only leader they had known. They couldn't imagine life without that leader. So these words were so difficult. They were easy for us to read, but they were very difficult for every one of those people to hear. And so what he says, this is toward the end, they're now in sight of the promised land. I have been with my Palestinian friends recently on a mission trip uh, about 10 months ago, and we were doing ministry in Jordan, and we went out to this very spot that you're reading about here. Standing on this spot, looking across, and you see the Jordan River, and we stood right where Moses stood and said this. And you're looking out at the Jordan River and the other side is the promised land. We're up on a hill and I, you're, you feel like it's holy ground because you know Moses stood there and did this and he looked at the land and then he says, I'm not going. The Lord told him, you're not going. Moses isn't going across. In his message it says to the people, what we read, it's two messages. Verses 1 through 6, it's a message to all of the congregation. And then from verses 7 and 8, it's a message specifically to his successor, Joshua. And so what does he say? He's standing on that spot. He's looking out over the promised land that they have dreamed of, and this is where we're going. And he says this, I will not go with you. Secondly, he says, God will go before you. And thirdly, he says, Joshua will be your leader. He will be your head. That's what we just read. I'm not going, but God is, and there's a new leader. He says, therefore, be strong, not weak. Therefore, be courageous, not fearful. Because the Lord your God is with you, he will not leave you, he will not forsake you. That was the word of Moses to the people. I'm not going with you. God is and Joshua is. Therefore, strength and courage. God is with you, he will not forsake you. Now, the message he gives to Joshua he looks at Joshua in verse 7. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all the people. So now he's got Joshua standing there on that same mountain where I stood with an Egyptian friend and a Palestinian friend. Stood right there and we prayed over, looking at that spot. We prayed for the next generations and what God would do. On that very spot, he now looks at Joshua in front of all the people. You know what he tells him? Be strong, not weak. I added the not weak, okay? You can't be strong and weak. He said, be strong and courageous. He looks at Joshua and he says, in front of these people, Moses is the only leader Joshua's ever known. 
Moses has been Joshua's right-hand man. And he looks at him and he says, you be strong, don't be weak. You be courageous, don't be fearful. Why? Because the Lord your God is with you and he will not forsake you. What does this have to do with us? Well, if we look at Joshua's leadership, I won't read the verses, but sometime, not right now, but a few pages away, the book of Joshua starts. And now Moses is no longer there. And it's amazing in the first nine verses of Joshua 1, everything out of Joshua's mouth is a repeat of what Moses said. And what is it look like now that Moses is no longer leading and Joshua is? Here's what it looked like. Verse 1, the same God who spoke to Moses spoke to Joshua. Verse 2, the same mission that God gave Moses, he gave to Joshua. Verse 3, the same promises that God gave to Moses, he gave to Joshua. Verse 4, the same vision that God gave to Moses, he gave to Joshua. Verse 5, the same promise of his presence that God gave to Moses, God gave to Joshua. And then here's what's interesting. Verses 6, verse 7, and verse 9. You know what it says? Therefore, be strong and courageous because God will be with you. Therefore, be strong and courageous because God will be with you. Therefore, be strong and courageous for God will be with you. What did the leadership and the, what they were doing, the mission, the promise, the vision, the culture, the everything, what did it look like? It was like this for Moses. And then when Joshua, it's the same God. It's the same promise. It's the same mission. It's the same vision. It's the same exhortation to strength and courage in the presence of the Lord. Was there a radical change? I am certain that Moses and Joshua had very different leadership styles. But it was the same God, the same promise, the same mission, the same vision, and the same presence of God with them. So what does this have to do with us? You, this great church, that has so many lives have been changed, the gospel's been preached, churches have been planted. I think... The word is, as you mourn, as you grieve, as you celebrate, and this last word, as you remember your beloved pastor, be strong in the Lord. Be courageous. Don't give in to fear. And know that God's presence is with you. He'll be with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. That is repeated over and over and over. And especially when Joshua stepped in. What Moses said one time, Joshua said three times. God's with us. And I want to tell you that even, even here during our worship time, the presence of God is here in a tremendous way. The presence of God to do everything that, that God has always done healing our hearts, healing our bodies, more importantly, healing our, healing our souls, people hearing the gospel and coming to Christ. We've talked, I've had the privilege of talking with your leaders, the leaders of this local congregation that used to be across the street. Uh, I was in that building yesterday with your pastors. I have, wow, so many Amazing memories from that. Is it that way? I hope I'm pointing the right way. The cross the street. When I walked in there, I looked around and I thought, this used to be bigger. It seemed so much bigger. Uh, maybe because so much was going on in there, it seemed bigger. But it always seemed crowded. I always felt I was pressed like, like you know, you're trying to get one too many people in the elevator. Um, What God's been doing here, he's going to continue. And I was privileged to talk with your pastors uh, over there and have some time of prayer. And, and um, it's very encouraging, um, the future of this church. 
I don't want to dismiss or discount the grief and the sorrow and the pain, but God's plan is still right there in his promise, in his presence, in his power, in everything else that this church needs. Um, I want to take a moment, the next few moments, and we want to... <clears throat> We want to honor, we talked about this yesterday with your pastors, and then we had the time with the pastors from all 14 locations all over the nation. They were here from, um, a lot of them are still here, but from every, every pastor. And everyone talked about, the pastors at least, have all heard Pastor Timothy say for 10 years um, in various circles that if something ever happened to him, that Pastor Sean was his successor and that this will be in good hands. And that's what wise leaders do. It was no mystery when Moses said, I'm not going across. There was no mystery. Well, what's going to happen? No, Joshua's going to lead you. And wise leaders do that. A lot of times insecure leaders are afraid to do that. And a lot of times pastors, especially of large churches, think they're never going to uh, not be the pastor, but your pastor was wise and he had a plan in case something happened to him. And I don't know how many times, more times than I could count that he made it clear to me. And every one of the pastors here have heard Pastor Tim say that and uh, every staff member has heard him say that oh, for years. It wasn't like one year he would say it was Pastor Sean, the next year he was not sure or the next year it was someone else. It's been a consistent message. And and I think it's right that this church family honors his wishes. And, and, and I think there's, there's, if Pastor Tim trusted Pastor Sean at that level, uh, then certainly we all should. Um, in a moment, we're going to lay hands on him and pray for him. Before we do that, we're going to hear from Pastor Teresa. And I um, want to hear her heart as one of the pastors who's not just been Pastor Tim's beloved wife, but also pastorally a confidant in every decision that's been made here and everything that Pastor Tim comes up with and, and the vision and the dreams and all the things. And after she shares her heart, then we're going to call up Pastor Sean and Jill and also every pastor from this congregation, those who serve as pastors in this local congregation that meets right here. And then also we have some of our Every Nation, and of course, um, Every Nation Malaysia has been, is a part of Every Nation Global, and we're in more than 80 nations, and we have a couple of our Apostolic Council members, some of our global team members are here. And um, Mike is our Indochina regional director, and we're going to, we have one leader who will be on the stage, who will have a mask on. We, he, he, he doesn't need to be seen as being here or named. Um, and we'll have some of those who will come and pray as long with, along with the pastors of this local congregation. So, uh, Pastor Teresa, um, can you come and share your heart, and can we give her a big hand as she comes and shares her heart? Is it on? Good morning. Yes. Good morning, every nation family. I mean, I can still stand here. I can still smile. It's because who God is to me and who you are have been to me, supporting us, loving us in this season of loss. I want to kickstart by quote what Pastor Tim had shared with us before, especially among the leaders. A good leader start by being a good follower. We all remember that, or some of you have heard that. Yeah, he has so modeled that. Under the leadership of Pastor Steve, since the beginning of time, he learned about honor God, make disciples. He came back, he told all of you, honor God, make disciples. Then, along the way, Pastor Steve said, the first minister, uh, sorry, the first ministry as a pastor is towards a family. Then he came back, you started to see it. He will flash his family pictures. Not only in this congregation, or, to the, or even to our 
churches out there, he always do that, right? Then, 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, Pastor Steve, download to the leaders when we in the, in the international meeting, say, you all got to empower the next generation. You have to have your second and third in line in your succession plan. He came back. He started to keep saying to so many of us, Pastor Sean, Pastor Sean, Pastor Sean. The last sound I heard him say that is towards uh, one of the kind church friends in this house who ferry us from the airport. He asked the same questions to Pastor Tim. Who will be the next in line? Pastor Sean. The international official and official best friend. No, it's Pastor Sean. Right? Who is Pastor Sean? 19... Sorry, 1998. It's the season of 1997, 1998. His ministry to campus where a, a few of them started to go to prime college. He was part of the first fruit where I was heavily pregnant with Joel and I delivered. 1998, where Pastor Sean was being led to Christ by him. Pastor Sean walked the journey and made him proud. When he graduated from School of World Mission, he came up the top. Everybody come to Pastor Tien and brag about Pastor Sean. He really made him proud. Along the way, he married Pastor Sean with the daughter of this house as well, Jill. Not too long after, Pastor Sean wanted to plant Darman Sara Church. He released him, gave him all the full blessing and support. The last thing that they did together, quote unquote, as a spiritual father and the son, is they went written together. This is Pastor Sean. Right? You know, all that I have said, I just want to land on this soft spot. Very clear. Very sure. He knows. This is the next for him. So I want you all to come alongside the pastoral team. Come alongside me to rally behind this man. He is not Pastor Tim. He is Pastor Sean. But we will focus on what God has laid upon his heart because behind all of them is a great God and so clearly will guide them and anoint them to do what they're supposed to do. So, I thank God for such clarity my husband had given to all of us that Pastor Sean will be his next. Thank you very much. Could we have the local pastors from this congregation come up and join us as we pray and then also those who are part of every nation international um, global team apostolic council and also if there's other every nation pastors i know pastor kai was here earlier i don't know if she's still here would you guys come up and we just start with the local pastors and let's lay hands on them and yes pastor Stephen I've known pastor Sean for over 26 years and uh, he was my best man uh, in the in the wedding and at the same time I forced him to make me his best man for his wedding <laughs> In fact, it was such, uh, uh, my, uh, my wife became was uh, pregnant with my son, the third child. And uh, because I, I wanted so badly to be his best man, I sent Bikim to the hospital a day before his wedding. <laughs> so that I can make it to, to the wedding, be the best man, then go back to the hospital to see my baby. 
But anyway, Pastor Sean has been really a great encouragement to me. And in fact, um, Pastor Sean is one of the, uh, as, uh, as we do ministry together, campus ministry, and uh, um, down the road, as I see really God's uh, anointing and gifting in him, I actually make him to be one of my mentors that I look up to, though I'm much older than him. Um, I, I really you know, uh, seek his advice, and I, many times I will update him of what's happening in my life and ask him to hold me accountable in certain areas of my life. So as I have served this church and served Pastor Tim for, I know Pastor Tim for over 30 years, and I've served this church since the uh, church um, started in 1991 and I joined the church in 1992. Um, I, uh, I would like to also serve Pastor Sean and uh, Jill together, you know, for the next chapter of Every Nation Church in Malaysia. And I want to uh, rally all of us here to uh, stand together with me to really uh, honour Pastor Sean and serve him and make the next chapter uh, and write the next chapter together. Yeah. Father, I just want to thank you for Pastor Sean. And Jill, God, I thank you so much for putting this couple in our lives, Lord God, Father. And in during this season, God, we commit them before you, God. Father, and we pray that we will continue to be with him, continue to be uh, an encouragement and strength to him, follow him as he follow Christ, Lord God, Father. Lord, we ask that you will uh, you anoint Pastor Sean and continue to give him wisdom and grace. And we will... Uh, pursue, do um, all that you have in store for every nation church in Malaysia. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to, we're going to now take a moment and pray as our every nation um, apostolic team and you pastors from this congregation continue to lay hands on them and we're going to, we're going to pray. A successful transition proves that this is a church belong to God. This is a church of God. This is a church built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Lord, we, uh, at this moment, we remember your faithful servant, Pastor Tim, who has built this church on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Lord, how we have honored uh, Moses, that's how we will honor Joshua. That how we honor Pastor Tim. That will be how we honor Pastor Sean. Because Lord, we trust you. We trust the providence of your hand. We trust that the um, the decision that they have laid in Pastor Tim's heart, it is now being embraced by every one of us here. Lord, bless Pastor Sean and Zeal. Bless their family. Bless their, the team that's going to uh, surround them. We pray that they will be strong and courageous in a transition time like this. Lord, may the anointing of the Holy Spirit be upon them. May they receive the strength from you daily to lead your church, to lead your sheep, to lead your people, to lead the sons and daughters in this house that you deeply love, that you purchased with your precious blood. Lord, we thank you for a faithful servant that's standing in this, in this uh, crowd of weaknesses, that he will carry on the same passion for the word, the same mission for the world, Lord, the same deep love for this house, for this family of God. Thank you, Lord. Bless him. Bless his leadership. Bless the things that you will uh, put in his hands to do. Everything he touches will prosper, oh Lord. We pray for your presence to be with him from this day onwards. Lord, thank you. We pray this 
In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord. For Lord would say unto you, my son and my daughter, that yes, Pastor Tim has appointed you as the successor, but know, my son, my daughter, that I have chosen you, says the Lord. Before you were born, before you were formed in a womb, the Lord says, I have chosen you and I have called you at this time for such a task, says the Lord. The Lord says, I have chosen you to be my mouthpiece, says the Lord. I'm going to give you words when you would uh, look for words. Do not worry. Be strong. Be courageous. For I will give words into your mouth, says the Lord. The Lord says, I will fulfill my plan in this church, in this ministry, through you, says the Lord, nothing and no one can thwart my purpose throughout the generations and generations of leaders that I will raise in your midst, says the Lord. The Lord says, I have found you faithful with the small things. Therefore, I am entrusting you bigger things. The Lord says, I have found you faithful to follow Timothy. Therefore, I have chosen and called you to lead this great people of mine, says the Lord. There's going to be uh, the same charge and the same mission, yet there will be different anointings, says the Lord. There'll, there's going to be different giftings, but you will lead my people into the promises, into the vision, the mission that I put in the heart of Timothy, says the Lord. Lord, thank you, for you are the same God who have called this couple, and you are giving them the same charge. And today, Lord, we install them as the new senior pastor of every nation, Puchong. Lord, we bless them, and we give them, Lord, uh, the blessing of the church and the leadership of this church. Lord, thank you. May you be honored. May disciples multiply through their leadership. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Man, can we give them, give them a big hand? Teresa, Joel, Joash, Jaden, Joanna. I think from the bottom of our heart, we just want to say that we are standing with you. Uh, I texted her two days ago to say that if there's anything that they need, yeah, my family, we, were, we are with her. And we as a church are with them. We love you. The church loves you. Okay. Um, to the church, Well, before that, Pastor Teresa, you know, we want to believe and affirm really her giftings and her anointing and the ministry that she has been doing in this house. Uh, she is part of our uh, ENCM pastoral team and she oversees uh, the prayer altar ministry. She oversees the prayer meetings, the victory weekends. She is one of the coaches for the life group cluster, the single mothers group and the different uh, e events that she runs and we would love to have her to continue uh, to lead that and to support that and to serve alongside with us. Okay, so, um, and to the church, I am deeply honoured and humbled to accept this role as a senior pastor of Every Nation Church Malaysia. Uh, in the many conversations that I have with Pastor Timothy about succession planning, you know, his version is always a lot sooner and my version is always a lot later. Uh, but one thing is clear that it's always been doing this together to continue to honour God and make disciples. You know, no one can replace Pastor Timothy. Uh, as we grieve, uh, we will remember his life, his laughter, his love. We treasure that. But all of us, every single one of us, every single leaders, every single members, we can continue to live out the legacy that He has left for us to keep the main thing, the main thing. You know, church, we need to be together to support one another, to encourage one another, to look out for each other. 
in this season. It is not to move on, but it's to build upon. To build upon the foundation that Christ has laid through our beloved pastor and to continue towards the next chapter of Every Nation Church, Malaysia. Let me pray. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful church that we know ultimately, God, Lord, that you said in your word in Matthew that you will build your church. And we thank you a lot for the life and the legacy of Pastor Timothy that modeled for us of what it means to love you and love others, God, Lord. And he has poured out that to so many of us, Lord. Father, I pray, God, Lord, that we will uh, imitate Him even as He imitated Christ, God, Lord, that we will in turn with the same love, love you and love other people. God, we thank you for this foundation that it has been laid. Uh, we thank you for the team, for the pastoral team. We thank you for the, for, the, for the life group, for the leaders that is together and supportive, God, Lord, to continue to do that, God, Lord. God, we know that even as we go along, we will figure things out together. But one thing for sure, Lord, that we know that your presence is with us. That we will continue to build towards the next chapter of every nation, Church Malaysia. God, we thank you, Lord. God, we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, thank you so much. I'll pass the time back to the host. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Sean, Pastor Teresa, Pastor Steve, and all the pastors in the house. Um, our service, first service of ch uh, the new chapter for Every Nation Church has come to an end. Um, just want to uh, let all of you know that the altar is open. So if you need prayers, um, you can come to the front. There are prayer ministers who will pray along with you. All right? So uh, I'll see all of you again next week. And uh, have a good week ahead. Bye-bye.